don't we? <sighs> the men have found something. <gasps> Previously on the Cracked and Crooked Man's. Mr. Dodge, there's no need for the police. I couldn't help but overhear as we came in. Why, Mr. Palmer, uh, the good Dr. Bergman and myself will readily readily be your first form of investigation. The, the long and short is we, we haven't heard from Mr. Cornthwaite in, in quite a while now and we're getting awful worried. As uh, Ms. Rose here suggested, I would like to have a quick look at those accounts, primarily because I was actually... Uh, Mr. Cornflakes, he actually, uh, he tried to, uh, I'm sorry. Um, Coming back, only passage was booked for one person. That's not good. Thirty years ago, there were, um, a series of, of very unpleasant murders. But that's not why we call it the Fitzgerald Mance. The Fitzgerald Mance, that was when it was built. The Fitzgeralds built the house. This is why people think it's a curse. Because thirty years before the Kerwin murders... There were the Fitzgerald murders. No, the books begin tumbling down, and you can you can you can feel his breath. I can you give me a sanity roll. Oh fuck me, that's a fail. You lose a point of sanity. Your muscles spasm, and you fire. So, Rose, you're having this conversation with Susan Arwell, and suddenly, from behind the next bookcase, in this very enclosed library, all the books suddenly fall off the shelves as you hear you hear the Doctor crash into a backwards into a bookcase, and then he suddenly bang, bang! <laughs> <laughs> the only thing that keeps her nerve together are, are those early years of someone beating out the rhythm to try and keep the, uh, the dance in step. Uh, and I think she involuntarily, presumably as Susie, Susan Arwell, ducks for cover or whatever she's doing, and also because there's a there's a dark past to her early years before she was in her late teens. Mm. Mm-hmm. Sort of Twelve to sixteen, she got into some bad company, so she's seen some things. But I think she she involuntarily responds with the cane immediately. Stamps it down twice to match the rhythm, <laughs> and then, and then kind of just leaps up, expecting to be attacked, and starts scanning the the, the stacks. Susan Arwell is she she lets out an involuntary scream at the noise. Um, no attack comes. I think even so, I think she hisses. Rose hisses. Get down, get down behind that desk. She already is crouched. <laughs> you stay there. Crouched you stay there. The you don't come up till I say. A book uh, falls off one of the shelves that's been shot. Uh, fudumf. Uh, and, uh, you know, as the, as the dust settles and the chaos ebbs, um, the figure of the Doctor just sort of slumps out from behind the bookcase onto the floor. Is he dead? Does he look like he's dead? <laughs> no, he looks like he's, um, he's just sort of confused and dazed, like a brief sort of catatonic spell. Uh, and then he's, he's slowly coming to... I will stealth over to him. <laughs> I've passed. <laughs> well, no one was trying to detect you, so you does, does that begin to become clear? Because it's quite a small library. Yes, yeah. And I, I, I'm pretty convinced now it's just the three of us in here. Uh, yeah, it definitely. What is. the hell is going on? For <laughs> Christ's sake, man! Uh, uh, I think she takes the gun and, and shoves it in his pocket, <laughs> unless he's going to resist. Um, uh, no, no. Uh... Uh, my dear Rose, I'm so sorry. I, I think I may have had a, an, an episode. If you would be so kind as to um, <clears throat> uh, get this uh, bottle out of my pocket. Of course, of course. I'll, 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 I'll look for the bottle. And I take it. Is it, is it. Does it look like vodka? Yeah, it's a hip flask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so. I'll, I'll unscrew it, take a hit, and then pass it to you. Uh, thank you very kind. And I take a take a little swig of that and I say I believe I may have had an episode it has happened before it's nothing to be concerned about I need to perform some uh, psychoanalysis on myself to understand why this has happened and sure it does not happen again if you <laughs> give me five minutes it shouldn't be a problem I just need a bit of peace and quiet and I'd like to do some psychoanalysis on myself um, <laughs> what to work out why you went mad <laughs> 
<laughs> it's more and more habit than anything else. But yeah, <laughs> basically, basically. Uh, 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 oh, unfortunately, I I cannot tell what happened. I assume yes. it's just a reaction to the uh, the, the stress of the situation um, and the <laughs> atmosphere. I think maybe some fresh air is all I need. I think I will step outside. Susan Arwell is just like, wait a minute, you've damaged the property of the library. We, 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 we who's going to pay for this book? Oh, m- my apologies, but do not worry. The, the Dodge brothers said they will cover any expenses. <laughs> this would be covered by the Dodge brothers. So I, have, I have as a, uh, as a, as a souvenir or keepsake from my grandfather, this, uh, service pistol, Luger, and it is temperamental. And sometimes it has a habit of going off, by itself. Don't worry, it does not, it's not loaded, it's just... Waving it in her face <laughs> as you show it to her. <laughs> it, it, it's more, it's it, it's <laughs> only loaded with blanks, it's nothing to worry about. I apologise for any concern. <laughs> um, could I do a persuade roll to try and convince her that she doesn't need to call the police? Uh, yeah, okay, sure. I'd need a hard success. Well, I failed. <laughs> she just sort of like looks at you sort of bewildered. And says, okay, I'll write to the Dodge Brothers then. (laughs) Um, And as you step out of the library, uh, you bump almost straight into Sebastian Palmer. Hey, where's lunch? Just just before I leave, and as I'm sort of helping him get up, uh, are there any nice-looking small volume books? Um, Yes, yes. sort of scattered on the floor. I'll I'll, I'll just take one and put it in my pocket. I I won't try and hide the fact that (laughs) I'm doing it. I just... It's not a sleight of hand. I do sort of humorously say that to the doctor as he emerges and then sort of maybe catch a whiff of him looking slightly disoriented and realise, you know, you should never tell jokes. Remember, you look hideous. <laughs> slap, myself on the, slap myself on the wrist. I'll say, uh, yeah. Well, just to, just to go back, Rose, you're, you're picking up a book uh, without trying to hide the fact. Uh, but I'd like to do it way back because I had no agency over the action of the response to, but... As soon as I knew that he was well, and that he was heading over to talk to the librarian at the, at the nearest opportunity, I would like to take one of the books on the floor. But she might she might have seen me do it. That's true. But I would I would only do it if she was engaged in another activity, because okay. then it would be a sleight of hand check, and I wouldn't I wouldn't openly do it in front of her. It's sleight of hand. Oh, uh, okay. Well, in that case, yeah, I yeah, you can manage. You, I mean, you can make me do a no. If you're doing it, if you're doing it while she's having a luger waved in her face then <laughs> it's 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 a, it's a response to stress she's stealing she's stealing something as a response yes. to stress yeah okay uh, that's fine then yeah um so uh yeah so you're all, you're all outside then i uh did you find anything interesting i think i think we did i think we found out that um dr bergman here is awful jumpy when it comes to things on bookshelves i guess uh I can only apologize. I, I think um, perhaps sometimes, you know, sometimes the dust spores inside a book can give you quite a violent reaction in terms of the mental stimulation. I, I, I think perhaps I got a nasty, nasty experience from the book and uh, can I do a maybe the gun went off. While he's doing this. Scientology. <laughs> uh, Scientology roll, please. Um, do I see Lord Zenu? Um, no, could I? Uh, you um, need to pay uh, five hundred pounds to do. A ah, sure, no problem. Yeah. Your Sigma brainwave Delta now. <laughs> I want to see if he's obviously sort of lying about. Oh, twenty on. What's my second? Forty-five. So a hard success. I mean, yeah, it it sounds like he's telling the truth that he's been sniffing books. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> So I don't get any impression that he's trying to cover up the fact that he's like a user of hard. I mean, there's drugs. a bit of that, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Okay. But on this occasion, I told you basically the truth, which yeah. is I sniffed a book. Right, I see. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's very true. That is very true, isn't it? Yeah. So actually, okay, that's an odd thing. I didn't know they sort of printed books from mycelium or whatever the fuck he's been sniffing, but... um. Why don't we uh, Why don't we uh, grab a sandwich and uh, head up to the house? What do you say? That sounds like an excellent idea. We can, I think we can talk on route. Would be a good idea. Mm. Let's get some coffee too. 
Mm. Yeah. As you Ruffy. as you're walking across the uh, the green there, a, a man is is running over. Whitford. Oh, it it is. It's definitely yeah. Sheridan. Um, <laughs> Shy. Uh, yeah. Uh, he's he's sort of sixty-ish. He's uh, he's a solidly built guy. I, I imagine he looks a bit like um, Tommy Lee Jones in um, No Country for Old Men. You know, he's got a collar and a tie, dark jacket with his sheriff's badge. He he's sort of got quite a, a grumpy face on him. Uh, he's uh, <clears throat> he, he he's just coming over and he says, um, "Hold it right there." Has he pulled a gun? No, no. All oh, right. Okay. He um, says, uh, "Who are you, folks? And what are you doing in a game well?" Uh, I can't help but notice I uh, you, you're coming out of the library just now. It sounded like there was some commotion. Uh, Nothing that Susie can't handle. Forgive me. My name is uh, Madame Demian. Uh, this is the good Doctor Bergman and. Uh, my friend here is uh, Mr. Sebastian Palmer. We, we're here looking into the business of the um, Conthwaite situation, Sheriff. I, I know our Conthwaite situation? Well, yes, he's not turned up to any of the municipal arts uh, meetings, and it's been noticed, and, and now the Dodge brothers have asked for, well, you know, before the loss, loss adjusters arrive, some friends have been asked to see whether we can make a difference and find the gentleman in question. It seemed the right place to start was here in town. Well... Won't you walk us to a coffee? I hear there's a good one just here. I'm all right for coffee, thank you, you miss. You surprise me. Most policemen want a coffee, especially at this time of day. <laughs> well, I've got a lot on my plate right now, and I don't have time to escort you around the... Uh, the uh, the municipality, as it were, but I'm quite intrigued as to what was going on in the library. Uh, I um, I I must only apologise for the commotion in the library. That was entirely m- my fault. I- I'm a stranger to these parts, and uh, there was I-, I had a bit of a tumble in the bookshelf. I sometimes have a funny turn, and if there's anything I can do to make reparations for um. The uh, for the accident, trust me, the Germans are very familiar with reparations, um, and I would like to do a, a, a psychology role to see whether I see any glint in his eye that suggests he might be susceptible to a bribe. Sure, that's a hard success on my psychology. There is no amount of money you can pay this man that will make him. <laughs> That will make him shirk his duties. Oh, crap, one of them. <laughs> he is one of them. <laughs> he um, he sort of just stares at you a bit harder and says, you took a tumble. Yes. Uh, let me elaborate a little. Um, perhaps m- m- my friends will agree with me. We are... I don't, in all truth. But if you'd like to <laughs> elaborate, feel free. We are very concerned with um, one of your town's most uh, famous sons, the gentleman Arthur Cornthwaite, who is a friend of ours, and we are uh, quite concerned about his whereabouts, and uh, we, uh, we, we are here concerned for him, and I, I think maybe the stress of the situation got the better of me, and I, as I say, I, I took a tumble in the bookshelves, and uh, really the stress of the situation um, but uh, now I've met you, this is very convenient bec- because perhaps we could work together in um, dealing with this situation, which I think is of interest to all of us. Listen, out of towner, I'm the law here, and I can tell you the Dodge brothers asked me to look at that house. I went down there, and I can tell you I took a look around. The feller ain't there. But there's no indication of violence or kidnap or foul play. 
fact of the matter is, I think he's been planning to leave for a while. Absolutely, and you confirm exactly what the Dodge brothers said, and they, they told us that you are a very, very reliable witness, an excellent man of the law, and uh, it's, that's why it's, I'm so pleased to have met uh, you. Uh, well, doc, 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 uh, uh, I think uh, <laughs> what this gentleman means to say is, uh, I'm sorry, Sheriff, uh, Obviously, you have the situation in hand. Uh, it's not that we've been hired to uh, to look through the guy's house. We know he's not there, obviously. They, they told us you'd look through it. They gave us the keys just in case, you know, one of us, you know, we're from different walks of life, I suppose, in case one of us could find anything in a diary or a, a journal or a calendar or something that might suggest where he's gone. But I'm, I'm with you. He's, he's clearly not here. Um, we might pop up there later just for a look around, but our job's not looking around here. It's... Helping you guys, really. It's uh, oh, looking further afield than you can. I don't believe I ever even mentioned the house. I I, do, I cannot speak for anyone else, but I have no interest in looking at the house at oh, all. Oh, I know, but uh, the, the, the sheriff here mentioned uh, that he'd had a look. Ah, and of course. He wasn't here. I was just saying, I know, we've we've been told that. We agree. We're not here to, to do over your own research. We're just no. here to... Yeah. Listen, you're welcome to look around uh, these you're expecting to find uh, whatever diaries, a paper trail, but I'll tell you what I know. The fella, he got rid of everyone who works at that house, one by one, for the last, well, God, God knows how many weeks before he disappeared. All out of towners, by the way, like yourselves. He's been planning to take off for a while. He's got the money. Why does he need to ask his lawyer's permission? This whole business is ridiculous. If you find him, sure. You, you take that lawyer's money, but... The law around here has bigger things to worry about. Uh, Sheriff, Sheriff, I completely agree with you. And th this is kind of what I was trying to say. Hey, I ain't turning down work. Whether or not these uh, solicitors, lawyers, law people, whatever you call them, they want to uh, pay us, hey, we're going to have a look about but I completely get you. He's probably just jetted off to Antarctica or someplace like that. I mean, the guy's got money. Um, Jet? <laughs> I'm a... <laughs> I, I'm a workers' man myself. I'm a union man. And I... Uh, it kind of worries me what you're saying about he was letting his... Uh, he was letting his staff go one at a time since he got back. Uh, are they locals? They were out of town, as you said? What, they were out of town. No, they Are you talking were just, drifters or just working men? I don't know who they were. Gardeners, yeah. cleaners. But when you say you let them go, they just, what, they just one day they, no one saw them anymore? Well, I'm pretty sure he, I don't know. So, so one day his house is really active, there's loads of gardeners, there's cleaners, there's butlers, there's chauffeurs, everything, and then one by one over a, a week or two, they all disappear. I'm just trying to get the sense of this thing. Yeah, pretty much. That was the gist. Yeah. And none of them are seen afterwards? You don't see any of them hanging around the... Uh, <laughs> uh, if only there was such a thing as a job center, right? Uh, that'd be really useful. But I guess you don't see any of them hanging around the bar, you know, uh, bemoaning their loss of work or going to the library to see if they can look up the number for someone else who needs gardening doing. They just... The bar? The, the, milk, the milkshake. Well, the bar first, the library second. The, the milkshake uh, bar. He means the, the milk milkshake. bar. He means the, yeah. mi the milk bar. Yeah, I mean, I no milk bar out here. Uh, <laughs> no. To answer your question, no. I ain't seen them. They disappeared. They left Gamwell. There ain't nothing for them here, I guess, without Cornthwaite's money. Well, if you're going up to that house, yeah, you do what you like. Just don't make a mess. No. We wouldn't. Do you still have uh, papers of your own up there, or you still got stuff that you're working on? He just stares for a very long time, and then he says, You could say that, yeah. There's some unfinished business in this department. I see. Um, is it fair to do a psychology roll on that stare? Yeah, yeah, I think so, yeah. Got a bad vibe off it. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah, I failed completely. Um, so I don't notice anything. <laughs> Everyone else is welcome to do psychology roles as well if you're listening. To All right. Mm. I tried. 
I've already done a psychology role on this guy, so I think I might be. I'll, I'll, give to, uh... I'll give it a go. I'll give it a go. Oh yeah, really good. Ten. He has an intense distaste for that house, and um, uh, well, Rose, you've you've seen the newspaper clipping, so you know that he was there when mm. um, the the Kerwin murders happened, oh, and his unfinished yeah. business is potentially. I'd missed that. Oh, I'd missed that. This, this was a good. Um... Arthur Kerwin, yeah. Mm. Anyway. Do, do, do I get the do I get the impression that he's very? That's a very closed thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He he he's not forthcoming with any further details about what he means. But he's, but he's proud of his job, so I'm going to go for it anyway. One moment, sheriff. Is it the Cohen murders that that haunt you still? Forgive me. That house. I had to go into that house. I had to get those bodies out. It doesn't matter who lives there now. If I ever go in there, all I see is the blood. I hope that bastard's still alive so I can shoot him down like the dog he is. Enjoy your stay in Gamwell. And he turns and starts walking away. And then he stops and turns back and he goes, One more thing. (laughs) Where were you all last night? Well, I was, uh, well, Sheriff, as you said, uh, we were out of town as I only from uh, a few miles away myself, you know, just past uh, the uh, the Great Lake, just around that corner by uh, Massachusetts, the little town there, uh, Massachusetts, <laughs> I'm just by Massachusetts, we're in Massachusetts, <laughs> this is just being a dickhead, <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm basically trying to say, I don't know the map, so I'm just saying... I'm from a town just over. And actually, I work there. I got a young family there. So I'm a local boy to a certain extent. But you can ask my wife, Rosie. I was with her all night. He says, uh, oh, so you, you all have. So you got here today. We, we yeah. all arrived this That's morning right. at the request of the Dodge Brothers. So you all my, got my... witnesses for where you were last night. Uh, yes, but would you mind telling us why you were concerned with last night in particular? Was there a strange event? Give me a persuade roll. Yes, yes. Well done. Man. That's a hard success. I could make it an extreme success if that would help. No, no. A regular success is all you need. Um, he says uh, you could say that. A little local matter. Seb Watkins lost a horse last night. It was valuable to him. Uh, it must have been taken some time in the night. There was a. There's a lot of heavy dew on Watkins' property this morning. Oh, any, and not elsewhere? Well, any tracks would have easily been seen if it had been taken in the morning through the dew. Ah, I see. I thought you were implying that the dew was heavy on that property and not elsewhere, suggesting some uh, localized weather phenomenon. I don't know about that, but his dogs didn't hear anything, so mm. someone took that horse. At least you asked them. <laughs> just let that hang uh, uh, I'm not going to talk Sheriff until I get another cigarette uh, Smoke all the cigarettes you want Rufus You're not going anywhere until you start barking um, <laughs> Brother Why'd you kill the horse Rufus Why'd you kill the horse I didn't kill no horse I'm a good boy <laughs> do, 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 do you feel that uh, does Seb, Seb Watkins have any connection to the corn, corn suites? Well, they're neighbours, but that's about it. Hmm. Well, if you can call them neighbours. Can you call them neighbours? But you just did. Well, uh, you know, there's a lot of land in, from house to house around these parts. I see, I see. But they are closer than any other houses. I guess. I, I understand. These areas, the neighbour can be, what, 10 miles from each other? You just uh, ride around to borrow a cup of sugar? It's fine. It's, it's the way it's done. Well, Seb Watkins can't be borrowing no sugar without no horse. No, true. Think on that. 
Poor Seb Watkins. And he just walks off. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes. Thank thank you very much for your time and uh, help. And uh, thank you for not arresting me for shooting up the library. What? He mumbles, <laughs> mumbles, mumbles into his hat. <laughs> that was just half an hour of distraction. So he didn't arrest yeah. us. <laughs> uh, well, I suggest we maybe get that sandwich and compare notes. Yes. Yes. Um, are we right next to the sandwich? I just want a coffee. I don't want a sandwich. I wouldn't want to be confused with any of my other characters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, you all get a sandwich and fill each other in on the details. Three Rubens! <laughs> uh, yeah, with extra cashew. I don't, I don't really eat, but I sort of <laughs> nibble the edge of my sandwich. She doesn't even I, I touch it. I finish everyone's left. <laughs> you eat three Rubens, basically. I, I eat three Rubens. <laughs> <laughs> and pass out. Is it fair to say we all exchange all the knowledge we've received from our various sources? Yes. Yeah. yeah I I'm yeah. not keeping anything from that. So yeah. Nor am I. I well, I've discovered nothing. <laughs> <laughs> um, but if I had, I wouldn't be keeping it from you. Yeah. Um. Obviously, as I tell you the the stuff I found out, my main preoccupation is suddenly, you know, the fact that all these workers have disappeared in South America. You know, that's just what's turning over in my head. But I tell you the full lot. I, if I learn what these two have learned, mm. um, I'd like to do an occult role. And I'm not sure whether I want to do an occult role. And, and I'm just going to ask you as players now. I've got quite a good occult skill. Do I want to do an occult role? On the salt or the name Kerwin? Do you think an occult would get me any knowledge on either of those? Are we talking Cthulhu mythos, really? To... I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm, Kerwin... It's up to Dom, really, but my instinct would be the salt you could probably get a success on, potentially. You've already, you've already checked the salt once, right? I checked it. Oh, yeah, that was, yes, of course, yes, that was yeah. the shared information, yeah. But you didn't do, a, you didn't do an occult role, did you? I did an occult role, yeah, but I just failed it. Ah. Well, I think I'd like to do an occult role on the salt. Sure. So there was this salt, he uh, he ordered a truckload of it. Salt, yes. Uh, Yes. No, that's interesting because I think there is an occult purpose for salt. I have a... I have a, a hard success on my occult role that tells me that salt is wow. sometimes used for Grit the purpose roads. of gritting roads, sometimes adding flavor to food, um, preserving meats, and also War- warding off evil. In terms of the occult, there's perhaps a, it, it's perhaps a little tenuous to jump to the occult for a, a, a dumpster truck of salt, but as a parapsychologist, perhaps you would. Yeah, that sort of volume of salt is unusual, but um, yeah, he's not running a water softener. No, <laughs> salt has often been used in magical rituals um, as a as a thing to purify things, you know. And obviously, in superstitious that use is like throwing it over your shoulder to um, you know purify a, an evil thing, um, you know, keep the devil at bay and all that sort of stuff. Um, it has been used uh, historically to detect witches because apparently they can't eat it. Um, and, uh, and it's often in some, you know, in some cultures, it's a very um, important offering for the gods because it's, it was an expensive thing. What kind of success did you get? A hard success. Well, you also learn then that, that um, uh, salt has been used in occult practice to repel demons, ghosts, and it can be used to sanctify places and can be used as wards to prevent evil spirits from entering a room or a building. May I sort of piggyback an anthropology role on the back of that to see whether it relates to any specific cultures? Uh, yeah. I failed that, so... See, I was thinking, you know, he's planning on raising the house to the ground and then sowing the so- sowing the earth with salt so nothing can grow there if somewhere's evil, you know. But, yeah, the demonic thing is quite a circle of salt, right? I don't know. Why am I talking? I haven't figured that. Um, It's used in the Abramelin um, operation, a famous occult ritual 
mm. where you, you have to put a line of salt around the whole building. Well, we're here, I, I suppose, I imagine I report back my knowledge of salt and its uses mm. to Sebastian, since he was the one who told me about the salt. Yeah. Um, Interesting. I should, uh, <laughs> I should tell the uh, the the salt farmers down the coast they need to be up in their wages if it's being used to <laughs> subdue demons. Well, it sounds like it is um, certainly. Uh, of course, it is all nonsense, but these superstitions sometimes can be very powerful. As as I say, demons, you see, probably my face shifts slightly at my own having said it, and I immediately like start rattling something in my pocket, just like shifting stuff between my at fingers. that I say Sebastian do you have demons of your own no I have angels of my own dark and I lift out the uh, rosary slightly out of my pocket of course many of us have uh, some sort of crutch uh, but if you ever feel you need to discuss your demons <laughs> I would be more than happy to offer you some... I appreciate your kindness, Doc, but it ain't no crutch. Analysis. Catholicism ain't no crutch. That's all there is. Mm. Is it back in his pocket? I understand. And I light up a, a cigarette. I, I eye his lighter with wide eyes until he snapped it shut. Rose, uh, Rose, my... Uh, Sorry, I, I felt compelled to tell you my my young wife's name is Rosie. Uh, I guess in Ireland we'd have called you Rasheen. Uh, I don't know. Rasheen Dove, perhaps. Uh, I hope you don't find that offensive. But, uh, yeah, you'd be the talk of the town. Anyway, um, we were talking about the salt. <laughs> and what were our conclusions, General? Mm, that uh, there were many superstitions of its use to ward off evil or detect witches and uh, repel demons. And I say the word demons and I look at Sebastian again. Repel demons or ghosts, uh, all, of course, ridiculous superstitions. But the human mind is a powerful thing and sometimes these superstitions can be more dangerous than, than anything else. Well, I guess you're the doctor. In my line of work, one has to believe in fate a little bit. And you have to give yourself up to it now and then. You know, I used to perform under the name La Demon. Back in Paris, this was. And I, sl I slipped my arm uh, into yours this time, Sebastian. The right arm. I put my left arm through your right arm. Mm. And I look at Sebastian and I say, There you go, another demon for you, Sebastian. I sort of attempt to chuckle. Uh, I've always, <laughs> I've always liked to think that there are angels as well as demons. Oh, yeah. then you are a very, very happy pair. Sebastian also believes in the angels, and now I chuckle. Yeah. <laughs> of course I do. Of course I do. And whatever's up at this house, and whatever the people who were there have done there, they've had the uh, the demons whispering to them, or they uh, they're sick in the head, or whatever it is. But either way, it's. Uh, it's nothing to do with the angels. Anyway, uh, huh, thank you. I, I sort of I feel quite like sort of breathless and taken aback by that, and I don't want to. It's a semblance of trust, I think, for him. So he's sort of like very kind, but he does sort of slowly remove his arm and sort of just put your hand down and say, um, "Well, are we going to the house or?" Uh... I think we probably should. I, I feel we have. Mm, received all the information we can from the library the, we have met the sheriff we could visit this uh, Sebastian Watkins and ask him about his horse but I feel the sheriff has told us all that there is to know about that uh, I guess we can visit the farm on the way out if we, there's nothing to find in the, the house it might be interesting to see if he still has this book the tribe that the jungle swallowed mm. yes yes to to the house then so it's um it's ten miles just outside of Gamwell, the house. So you would need to take a car. I mean, I've well, if if you accept this, I did sort of say at the start I drove here. Mm. Um, I imagine because I work 
around cars a lot. It's probably an old banger, as much as an old banger can be an old banger in the 20s. Um, you know, it's still relatively new for an automobile, right? But uh, it's, uh, you know, maybe one that I've just built from scraps or one that I'm working on at the moment and I've sort of got permission to take it to go and snout out this job. So I, I, if, if that's all right, I'd probably offer to drive the others. You drive out of Gamwell. Yeah. Um, I've got neons under the wheel rims. Of course you do. <laughs> it's quite isolated out here. Like each, as the sheriff mentioned, sort of each house is quite far apart. Um, but sure enough, you come up to this um, this high stone wall that surrounds the property. And you can see it's this. This is clearly the place. Um, it's topped with iron spikes, and there's a big gate. As you come up to the gate, you see that it is. You know, you're going to have to get out to open the gate. Mm. And as you're driving up there, these black and grey clouds scud across the sky. A chill wind is picking up, and there's a bit of uh, sort of dampness in the air. And you pull up on the roadside next to the uh, the gate. You can see beyond the gate the mansion at the end of this driveway peeking out through this dense garden. It's, it's, there's lots of trees. It's very lush. Who was it with the botany? If anyone does have botany, you could do a roll. Well, I've always been interested because I started off down in the south there and I was always fascinated by the natural forms, the way they moved in the wind. And then years later, I began to try to incorporate it a little into my work. Like the fairy folk. And also, of course, a little bit of the human anatomy was a part of my inspiration. But the world beyond, those lovely flowers, shit, I failed. <laughs> <laughs> Too distracted by uh, the images conjured up by your own mind. Yeah, I think I think she's going to push it. <gasps> oh, yeah, I think she is. You, you, you can't spend luck on a pushed roller, can you? No. How good is your botany? It's bad, it's 25%. What did you roll just then? 39. Well, wow, what's your luck? It's uh, uh, 60. It's a lot, isn't it? That's a lot of luck, isn't it? To check it, to have a look at some trees. But do you know what? We always say this, and then one of us always just ends up fucking dying without even having spent half their luck. It's some trees. It's some trees. Do we want to know? We're, what? we're driving past the trees, right? So that's the problem. Is I can't see properly until I get it in amongst them. But maybe... Mm. Yeah. As, as the keeper of the Gamwell uh, murder record, you um, w- would it be possible to to uh, do another botany roll when we get out of the car? And I'm happy to that for that to be the push. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so maybe we should get there first and let's see what else happens. <laughs> but as you get out of the car and you walk up to the gate, you realise there is a large chain and padlock around the gate. We've not been given a key for a padlock, have we? It's just the front and back doors. Yeah. Well, my friends, <laughs> I, for one, find it very strange that, very, very, very peculiar, that the Dodge brothers did not mention that the gate would be padlocked. They said it would be rude for them to have entered the property. They did not say... The gate was padlocked. We could not enter the property. No. What does that tell you? Can I have a look at the padlock? There's no, like, does it look... Obviously, from a chain of padlock, you won't be able to tell if it was put on yesterday or, like, a couple of weeks before, but there's no markings on it or anything that make it look official? It's not... No. No. In which case, do I have a... I guess this might be a luck roll, but considering I've taken the car from my work... Do I have any, like, sort of uh, cables or chains or hooks in the back that I might be able to use for, like, pulling a chain off a gate? Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah that would be a luck roll, I suppose. You could, unless you've got locksmithing. I don't have locksmithing. I know someone else does. As he heads back towards the car, I imagine in quite yeah. a quite a single-minded yeah. Capacity. I'm just going to have a look, all right? I'm just going to look what I got. I, I feel like he knows his business, and I feel like he doesn't you know, mess around. But, I mean, while I'm searching, while I'm sort of huffing over to the car... I, I'll walk with you, and, I, and I'll say, what say I have a look? 
you know, I never... Yeah, I mean, I almost rolled a fail, a uh, fumble. Not quite, but, uh, hey, I got fuck all in the trunk. <laughs> and also there was that so, uh, there was that business of not damaging the property. Meanwhile, you see Johannes taking his Luger out of his pocket, <laughs> sort of standing hey, back. Hey, hey, Johannes. Pointing it quite slowly. Johannes. Hans. Johannes. Hans, Hans, please, both of you. Yeah, please. yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. turns around. <laughs> yes. Could we, yeah. Could we maybe... <laughs> Chill. It's not that the man, money really means that much to me, but we were warned not to damage the place, and also a gunshot might attract some attention. Oh, Do you mind yes. if I ha- have a look? Oh, by all means, of course. I may, course, I may teach young ladies and gentlemen how to dance now, for the shows, you understand. And I may do it very well, but I wasn't always what I am, if you pardon the expression. By all means, have a look. I, I thought you two had given up on it, which was why I... No, no, I, sh- I should have explained. I was seeing if I had a, a rope or... My God, she's got a hairpin. I'll take out the um, the long hairpin. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it just keeps coming out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's massively <laughs> long. It clamps down a wild bunch of curls. Uh, wow! And uh, yeah, I'll probably uh, I'll probably have to take out a few more pins, and, but uh, with a couple of pins armed, I will try the locksmith roll. Uh, now this is a southern charm locksmith roll, so you get a bonus, right? <laughs> ah, love it! <laughs> if you need a little something for confidence, I may be able to help you. Out. I think that might actually distract me. <laughs> it's, not as, it's not as good as I thought it was in my mind's eye. Regional charm rolls are a great. Okay, I'm gonna spend I'm gonna spend three luck. First off, first mm. luck, and I'm gonna pass that roll. Thirty-six. Nice. I'm gonna take that down to thirty-three. Nice. Sick. Uh so it clicks. Cling, the chain comes undone. And the 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 gate, it's got you know, it's really damp at the moment and kinda of like like everything's dripping and it So they're big gates. They're big gates. Yeah, big gates. You can drive up the driveway if you want to. Um it's wide enough. You ever in, indulge in any uh, industrial S sort of sabotage or anything like that? Well, no, of course not. Uh, un- unless you need me to. And, and she winks. Uh, uh, the wink sort of takes me completely off guard because people don't usually wink at someone who looks like me and I sort of... Ha, 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 ha. And then sort of turn <laughs> back around. Um, yeah. But the gates are open, right? They are. Should we drive or walk? Let's drive. I want to keep the car in sight. I can't afford to lose this thing. That's good thinking. Yes, I would be happy to drive and feeling a little weak after all this time on our feet. Yeah. Um, well, I'll hop back in the car and power through mm. the gates with them. If that's... you call this a long time, well, I once danced with uh, Sylvia Buscemi, Ginger Rogers, oh, yeah. <laughs> Silvio Berlusconi, oh, Sylvia Buscemi. <laughs> well, we don't all have your constitution. <laughs> so you go up this wide driveway. As you drive up it, there are these sort of ill-defined paths leading off that have it's quite overgrown. The garden is it, it's wild. I mean, there's all sorts of trees and plants, and and the grass does not look maintained. It's sort of it's sort of gone. It, it, there's a riot of life out here. Um, everyone can give me a spot hidden as they as you slowly drive your way up the up the driveway. As as I look up, I say, uh, I'm all for workers' rights, but if their gardener still works here, he needs firing. <laughs> <laughs> I've just passed my spot hidden. Oh, just missed it. Just missed it. Yeah, I, oh, I've no. missed it by. Yeah, I missed it by twelve. This. So only the doctor passed there. Only the doctor passed. Um, so the doctor's maybe sat on the correct side of the vehicle for this. On the right hand side, you uh, over to the right as you're driving up. Um, you can see poking above the trees uh, or through the trees. You can just about make out this little structure. Um, it's. It's perhaps some sort of shed. Um, something about it, though, is very sinister to you. It seems almost like it has a sort of the way it's sort of squatting there in the in the darkness between the trees resembles almost a kind of like a 
a little evil little face. Now, oh, very uh, sinister, evil little face. That sounds like a very hu- human analysis of something which is a physical structure. It has no particular <laughs> value. You're attaching a value judgment to a, the, the. You cannot give personality to a building. Nonsense. <laughs> That's what you tell yourself. <laughs> And um, that's what I tell the others when I say, "Look at that building," which I suppose you think that's evil. But Bergman it's not. is building. <laughs> Bergman is a genius. He's he is decades ahead of his time. That that <laughs> single analysis. If you just genuinely say that out loud, I say, uh, "Yeah, I suppose so." But uh, you got to think of the workers, right? Who built the place and who designed it to look that evil? You know, it ain't just about a building looking evil. What if someone wanted it to look evil? Sebastian Palmer, you are a very intelligent man. Oh, I don't wow. guess it to look at you. <laughs> That's very profound. <laughs> Thank you. Um, there is, I mean, the grounds are enormous. This is like a, this is like a private woodland, practically. Um, but the immediate surroundings of the property, this sort of ornamental garden, the stone benches, there's a fountain, um, Planters, and uh, there are some, you know, willows, cherry plums. There's all sorts of different trees, but like I say, overgrown and and, and somehow kind of threatening in the way that it's sort of it's sort of gloomy and wet and flowering. Um, Nature is Satan's church. The house is sort of sat in this sort of dark, dank, green overgrowth. Practically, would now be a good opportunity to try that pushed. Botany role. Yes. I think what she does is, I think, pretty much wordlessly, as the other two have just finished their quite complicated exchange about psychoanalytical genius, and uh, <laughs> and I'm assuming we've stopped the car now. Yeah, yeah. In order to have a look, um, but we're not necessarily out of the, out of the car. For, for the sake of the record, I will pull up round the fountain if that's in the thick. Or either way, I'm going to be facing the car back outwards. Uh, yeah, sure. To stop, just from instinct. But as we, but as we get out, I think I hand my, I think I hand my fur, my stole, which I was wearing over my elbows previously. But of course, I wrapped it around my as it got a bit wetter and damper and colder. But I hand that, the cane, and the hat over to Sebastian, and I say, "Look after these for me when you share, just for a moment." Of course. And then she sprints up to the nearest tree that she thinks can take her weight and climbs it. For a view of the area, uh, the the tree is very wet. Would you like me to do a climb roll? Mossy. Actually, yes, a climb roll would be great. While she's doing a climb roll, can I quickly do a zo- zoology roll to see if I recognise the animals these things are made from? The animals that what are made from? Sorry, the uh... the the clothes I've been made to carry, the stole and the. <laughs> oh right. <laughs> I was assu- I was assuming they were fur. Well, uh, yeah, there's a sto- there's a fur stole, there's a cane, and there's a hat. Ah. Oh. Success. Badgers. It's all badgers. Bad- no. <laughs> <laughs> it's a classic badger stole. Why wouldn't you have a badger stole? Wow. <laughs> you stole a badger. Where do you steal a badger from? I mean, I think it's probably a, it's probably a mink, isn't it? It's a, a mink that stole. That seems more likely. Rather yeah. than a coat, it's a mink stole. Or angora rabbit. Um, fox. Yeah. Foxes. Or, or maybe a fox stole. Um, yes. Oh my god. Yep. Done it. I've passed my botany. 18. Of course it is. It's 25. I know what my button is. The moss on this tree is, is thick and spongy and, um, and and very wet and slimy. But you managed to sort of... Climb. Oh, no, that was my climb. Really... That was my climb check. I don't know what my botany role is yet. You were making me do a climb. Apologies, Governor Governor no, of the... Uh... No, but I think it combined... What, would that, would, if that role, would that have passed on climb and botany? Yes. Oh, then that's fine. So, yeah, you climb up and you it gives you an opportunity to have a real good look at this tree, the moss on it, and you get a, you get to survey some of the trees in the nearby area. Um, the, the odd thing about this place is that some of these trees, um, everything seems very natural, but a number of the plants and trees are tropical. They seem to be um, thriving. But it's not really the right sort of right. climate for some of these plants. So whoever was his gardener was 
pretty good. And there's gardeners on the books. And everyone's welcome to make a listen check too. Hard success. Fail. Fail. Thank God he's here. Well, they, they have always said I was a good listener. Important skill for psychoanalysis. As Rose comes down from the tree, I mean, except for what you've given Sebastian, your clothes are now covered in mud, slime. green slime, moss, um, umskar. Um, oh, how, how disappointing. And it's, it's quite cold and wet. Without a decent pair of Wellington boots. <laughs> exactly. Um, I'll get to the, what the doctor experiences in a moment, but you find yourself stood in the shadow of this mansion this storied and two-story mansion um it is silent shuttered and brooding there's ivy clinging to one side of it it's kind of still masked by nearby trees it's clearly very large and well constructed but as you're looking at it you're all struck by this sense that it doesn't quite it looks like it maybe is i don't know it's one of those weird things where you, you look and think that's not flush. It looks like it's... Like there's something slightly crooked about it, but you can't put your finger on what. And as you're standing there in its presence, contemplating perhaps whether to go through the front or the back, the Doctor becomes distracted by the sound of silence. Despite being in practically a private woodland... There's not a single chirp from any bird. All you can hear is the wind. And nothing else. This was an Apocalypse Players production. For more information about the podcast, go to apocalypseplayers.com. Thanks for listening.